let's bring in now uh, a very special voice in our Bundesliga coverage. We have none other than the Derek Ray here for us. That means it is time because we're getting closer to the Classicer, Derek. Another juicy edition of the Classicer. Um, but in a season where Bayern and Dortmund have both had to contend with the likes of a high-flying Bayer Leverkusen under Xavi Alonso, of course, Stuttgart still there in the race. But um, what do you feel for this one? How does it go? Well, first of all, hi, Alexis. Hi, Shaka. You're absolutely right, Alexis, the way you framed it. On the one hand, Dortmund against Bayern is the biggest fixture in the Bundesliga. But on the other, this season, we have a very different dynamic. And I'm glad you've highlighted Bayer Leverkusen under Xavi Alonso, who are playing spellbinding football, and I think are in this for the long haul. Now, in a sense, that actually takes some of the pressure off Dortmund, because for years we've been saying, oh, unless Dortmund beat Bayern, that's it. You know, only one team can win the title. But Shaka knows this, having played at the highest level. When you have multiple teams going after the big team, and that, of course, is Bayern, then it sort of helps them all a little bit. You know, you have different teams taking their, their shots at Bayern and Leverkusen have done it and Leipzig have done it. They've both drawn with Bayern this season. Now, of course, you also have to add to the equation the backdrop of midweek, of Wednesday night. In the day of Bepo Kyle, the German Cup, Bayern going out against third-tier Saarbrücken. Nobody saw that one coming at all. Amazing scenes in Saarbrücken. It's why we love football, the magic of the cup, but the day of Bepo Kyle in this case. And so Bayern are reeling. They haven't really played horribly this season, but I think from my point of view, as somebody who watches them pretty much game in, game out, the balance of the squad is wrong. Thomas Tucher has said this, hasn't always pleased his bosses that he's highlighted the fact that the squad is thin. And when I say thin, it's thin really only in certain areas, but in crucial areas. And I'm talking about defensive midfield. Uh, they're already hampered there. And now Joshua Kimi is suspended, not very mm. conveniently. And um, then you look at the defence and you look at the full-back positions, right-back in particular. Uh, Left-back is okay with Alfonso Davies, but at right-back they have a problem. And in central defence for this game, Matthijs De Ligt out with an MCL for a few weeks. And um, they have this embarrassment of riches in the higher-up positions. You know, just look at Levi Zane in the form of his life, Jamal Muziala, Kingsley Coman, Thomas Muller, who's often a bit part player nowadays. And then we get to Harry Kane and his 12 goals in nine matches. So it really is almost a case that they have too many riches in attack and not a proper balance within the rest of the squad. And we can get into Dortmund, but I think there's a good chance Dortmund can exploit some of that in this match. Well, let's talk about and stick a pin there, a name that you just um, mentioned right there, because we know that with all the talk in terms of attackers, uh, Bayern Munich has been centered and focused on Harry Kane, and rightfully so, but they do have quite the special talent in Jamal Musiala, and our very own Kay Murray got to catch up with him just before Germany managed to play against the U.S. men's national team. Here's what he said. So Harry Kane has spoken in glowing terms about you recently. What's it like to play with him? Yeah, I mean, he's a, an amazing player. I see it in, in training and in the games, how serious he takes his uh, finishing and I also ask him for tips about what I can, what I can do uh, better to get more goals and everything. And yeah, he's just, he's a very nice person, great person. And over, over time, the connection will get even better between us and we'll have a lot of fun. He spoke recently also about the incredible atmosphere in Germany at the stadiums. It's been a surprise to him. Can you try to describe what he's about to encounter playing for Bayern in Dortmund's ground? Yeah, I think uh, he'll get probably a lot of booze. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the atmosphere is, is great. I always love uh, playing there. The atmosphere it's, it's very nice. The, the fans are very loud. Uh, it, brings us as players there's more intensity and it shows that everyone uh wants to win and they'll definitely enjoy it a lot Jamal Musiala, there's such a special talent. And of course, the fact that he gets to play alongside Harry Kane is, is even better. Shaka, just thoughts on how Bayern can get things right. They're away to Dortmund. We know exactly how hostile that yellow wall can be for them, but I'm sure they are used to it now. But also how Bayern can get that balance right, as, as Derek pointed out, is something that Thomas Tuchel has yet to perfectly find. 
Yeah, so I, I think there are a, a number of things that, that factor into this one. Um, while Dortmund's results have been have been great, I, I don't think some of their football, well, uh, their football better uh, uh, recently has been has been getting a whole lot better. But to start the season um, again, getting results, but but without playing great football. The other aspect of this is is a head to head. The head to head between these two, and I, I'm, I'm sure Derek will, will, will correct me. I think uh, Dortmund haven't beaten Bayern in the last nine or ten or something of the sort. And, and when you get to that, when you get to that kind of stage, it, it becomes a little bit of an issue. You know, you it, it's it's psychological. Even though players may change um, to to have that longer run, um, I, I think it, it plays in in the backs of, of everybody's minds, uh, including including the fans. And then yes, you'll be playing at home. There, there will always be a certain level of expectation there. But, but Derek touched on it. I, I think in terms of playing against Bayern, um, I, I don't think you could have picked a worst, a worst weekend, given that mm -hmm. they just lost to Saarbrücken. And, and we all know Bayern Munich, uh, the, the least of their expectations is to win two trophies. One's now out in the Pokal. That, that is out. So yeah. now you're looking for a, 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 well, a long-term response and they've got to win the Bundesliga title and got to win the Champions League. Otherwise, everybody's kind of questioning Thomas Tuchel. Um, but right now, from a Bayern, a Bayern perspective, you need a reaction and you need a big reaction. Harry Kane was rested against that broken, tight hamstring, I think they said it was, but fully expected fully expected to, to play this weekend. Um, so that, that uh, for me, shows Bayern will be at their at their fullest, Joshua Kimmich apart, and and probably at their most wounded. Which, given the history between these two, uh, I, again, as, as I said from the top, I'm not sure you could have picked a worse weekend. All right, Derek. With all of that we've just said right now, hit me. Give me a prediction. How does this one end? Well. Looking at Dortmund, Shaka's right. I mean, there were sort of no frills early on. Edin Terzic said, we are less success, uh, sorry, less sexy, more successful. <laughs> or at least that was what he was aiming for. Um, I think that Dortmund will take something from this game. Uh, I think Bayern do have problems in the sense that Goretzka is going to have to play, although he broke a bone in his hand. He'll be wearing a cast. How easy that's going to be, I'm not sure. In defence, you might well have Upamecano having to play, and he's not played recently. We don't know if he's really fit, but they don't have too many other options. Manuel Neuer, of course, only just back after the long absence following the skiing accident. I just think that Dortmund are ready to pounce. I'd put it that way. Julian Brandt is in very good form. He can certainly take advantage if Bayern are negligent at all in those defensive areas. And I think it's going to be a great contest with a lot of goals. It's a goal-rich fixture as a rule, Alexis. So I'm going to say a scoring draw, and I might even go as high as 3-3. Oh, 3 3. <laughs> that does sound like a very exciting game. Make sure to tune into De Classica. It is on this Saturday, 1 30 p.m. Eastern Time, exclusively on ESPN. Plus, you can listen out for Derek and the rest of the crew. They will be there. And if it's exactly as Derek predicts, then it's going to be a goal thriller. Thank you so much, Derek. Enjoy De Classica. Thanks for having me. All right, we bid goodbye to the great voice that is Derek Cray. And let's go back to another great voice, Chaka. Let me get your input then. How do you see this edition of the Classica going? Well, I, I wasn't too far from, from Derek in all honesty in my, my predictions for <laughs> FC. I went 3-2 Bayern. I, I like, like Derek. I think there's going to be a lot of goals to this. But I think Bayern just sneak by. Just. 3-2 might be unconvincing or not convincing enough for, for Thomas Tuchel, given what happened in midweek, as, as, as we mentioned. But most importantly, they, they got the three points. And I, and I think, um, you know, that, that's where I, my, my head is right now. I, I just feel that this is far too big a game for Bayern, far mm -hmm. too big a game for them to lose, more specifically. So they, they, they get the results. Uh, they get the three points.